Ted Bundy has received attention from mainstream Hollywood fairly recently, with Zac Efron and Frodo Baggins each appearing in separate major motion pictures. In this video, I'm going to take a look at the 2002 film starring Michael Riley Burke. Never heard of him? <laughs> yeah, nobody has. Welcome to Breakfast Cereal. My name is Josh, and I'm back with another installment of Film Fridays. Ah, that's such a boring title, and I know it. Somebody give me a better idea, a better name for this down in the comments, would you? Today, I'll be taking a look at Ted Bundy from 2002. Make sure you stick around until the end of the video for my rating and recommendation on whether to watch or skip. And don't forget to do me a favor, murder that subscribe button. As per usual, spoiler alert, Starring no one you've ever heard of, this movie opens with a credit sequence that is on par with an early 2000s Apple screensaver, and it doesn't get much better from there. The opening scenes are comical. Take this mirror scene, for example. Okay, I get what you're going for. Ted Bundy was a guy who seemingly lived multiple lives. He was both charming and a monster. But this, <laughs> coupled with this kind of cringy performance of this. My name's Ted. It's a pretty bad way to start your movie. From there, it jumps straight into what I guess they want us to believe was a typical Bundy day in 1974. Bundy, looking very Pee Wee Herman-like, rip, heads off to school in his VW Beetle, and a mere three minutes and 45 seconds into the film is already fondling himself. He's checking out these girls, who are dressed in what appears to be the 1970s hippie girl costume purchased from the local Halloween costume store for $29.99. Seriously. Also, you want me to believe that this man is a college student? Look at those crow's feet. How do you do, fellow kids? Then again, in the early 70s, I mean, everybody for some reason looked ancient. Archie Bunker from All in the Family? He was only 50. I mean, this teacher is probably only 29. Anyway, after school, he goes on a little klepto spree. He steals this tuna and mustard thing from the grocery store, then cash from this lady's purse, then this TV, and finally, this house plant? This is a really weird scene. I don't know, was Bundy a klepto? I, I googled it, and apparently his girlfriend said he was an occasional kleptomaniac. Occasional strikes me as a strange word there. I feel like you are or you aren't, no? I mean, if you want to say that, technically, he goes on to be an occasional rapist and murderer, but that's not really how we word that, is it? Ted Bundy, occasional rapist and murderer. He ends his day by going to a bar that's playing techno in 1974. And then uh, he follows a woman home so he can jerk off in the bushes outside her window. But apparently this isn't the first time because of this crotchety old neighbor. Oh hell, you again? <laughs> well, if that isn't the worst way imaginable to deal with this situation, I don't know what is. He's not a cat. Call the police, man. I actually touched on this in our full length Bunday episode, link down below. Although that was talking about his high school years. He was busted in high school jerking off by classmates on several occasions, and they would use a spray bottle to squirt him. <laughs> Bizarre. Psh, psh. The 70s, man. Believe it or not, the movie takes a turn after this and actually gets better. It's really hard for me to understand why they would open with such a shitty sequence. Were they trying to mimic Bundy's personality like they did with that mirror scene? This movie is both really shitty and also not that bad just like Ted. The opening five to 10 minutes are so bad that I would think a lot of people would maybe even shut it off. It puts an immediate cheesy, zany, over the top taste in your mouth. And it's really not representative of the rest of the film. Now, that's not to say that the rest of the film is cinematic gold or anything. It feels very paint by numbers and gives you just a basic retelling scene by scene of the murders and Bundy's wild spree throughout the mid to late 70s. It fails to explore the psyche of Bundy or attempt to dig into the motivations much. There are some fairly hollow interactions throughout with his long-term girlfriend that fail to shed much light, but they do act as the way the film shows Bundy's so-called softer side. 
definite trigger warning. A lot, a lot, a lot of sexual violence in this film. And they just love showing Ted either beating his victims with a crowbar or a two by four or cursing at them while he's assaulting them. But I guess, you know, that was his MO. If you know Bundy's story, there's a lot that will be familiar here. The suits and sweaters, the VW Beetle, his sister mother. Imagine being five years old and finding out that your sister is really your mother. Working at the suicide hotline, the cast. I was wondering if you could help me out. The crowbar, bikinis, putting makeup on a severed head, the police lineup, escaping jail, escaping jail again, and of course, old Sparky. The movie also makes sure to show us the many clever and diabolical methods Bundy used to entrap his victims, like this. Is there any chance I could get you to help me carry these to my car? Or this. What is it, your heart or something? Oh. 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 <laughs> the old, your car's been stolen and I'm a police officer routine. I'm sorry to bother you, but it looks like somebody's broken into your car. What? Wait. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. You're gonna need to come with me. Of course, this. I thought you needed help unloading your sailboat. Uh, yeah, it's at my folks' place, just up the hill. Can I mention that? Or my favorite. Holy shit, look at that. I mean, that's just downright lazy. So did I like the movie? Mm, I'm really torn. It's just such a middle-of-the-road film. It's almost like if Hallmark made serial killer films instead of Christmas movies. Personally, I'm drawn towards more psychological movies, and this, well, it sure don't got that. It also doesn't go far enough in the other direction to land in the so-bad-it's-good category. Except maybe that Bushes scene. <laughs> or this scene where they push the narrative that sorority girls are really just hanging around having pillow fights. Hey, what are you guys doing? What does it look like we're doing? If you're looking for this movie, I found a ripped version that unfortunately cut off with about 15 minutes ago. So I searched my streaming services and could only find it on some weird service in Canada called Tubi. And even then, it was only available in Spanish. It certainly isn't a painful watch and it kept me entertained enough. I give Ted Bundy five spoons. There you have it. Ted Bundy from 2002. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this review. What did you think of my take on this film? Have you seen it? What did you think? What film should I review next? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, make sure you murder that subscribe button and hit that notification bell because I have new killer content dropping every week.